So, brother, use the pan. All right. God bless you. Lord bless you, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. Let's clap our hands and praise him right now. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and praise him right now. We love you, Lord. 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 I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. It's good to be here. We thank uh, Brother McCartney for the invitation to be here with you folks tonight. Amen. We just believe in God for something great. Amen. amen. We serve a miracle working God. Amen. Come on. Do we serve a miracle working God? Amen. 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 One more time. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. One more time. Let's lift up our voice and exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is worthy. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah right now. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah right now. Somebody shout hallelujah right now. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, 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 amen. My wife has asked to be excused from singing tonight. She got ill this morning and she's still not feeling the best and we'll just leave it like that amen we would not want to see something happen amen why she is trying to play and sing so uh, you pray for her that God will touch her and minister to her in Jesus name amen. praise God but I, I feel like amen that I have a a word for this church for you tonight Amen. And I trust and I pray that you, you will be receptive to it. We know the scripture, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. Let's stand, if you will, in honor of the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. Praise God. The Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want us to read it again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I want to preach for a few moments tonight on just this simple word. Everybody say, wait. Come on, everybody say, wait. Amen. Pastor, would you pray over the word? Lord Jesus, we gather here this evening to honor you, to prepare ourselves for the kingdom that you promised you were going to go prepare for us. While we listen to your word, this evening, Lord, as it is ministered to our hearts, may our hearts be a prepared garden. May the word of God be seen so Touch there. our spirit, Lord. I'd like to spring up and bring forth the precious spirit of everlasting life. And on our brother and sister, the ministry, have a minister to us this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. One of the greatest killers of faith. One of the greatest killers of faith is not doubt. It's not fear and unbelief. Those three elements will kill faith. But in my mind, in my opinion, that is not the greatest killer of faith. The greatest killer of faith is simply a four-letter word that we have read in our scripture reading tonight, and that is the word wait. We are given a promise from God. We begin to confess that promise. We pray that promise 
We invoke that promise. We speak that promise. We testify that promise. Amen. And it seems like that as we pray and we worship God and we thank God and we magnify God and we glorify God and we testify about the promise and we stand upon the word of the promise, nothing happens. We wait for days. We wait for weeks. We wait for months. And in some situations, we even wait for years. And because there is that period of time of waiting, it then begins to detract us and it begins to rob us of our faith. Amen. That we will no longer stand upon the word of the Lord. We will no longer be receptive to what God has promised. But I am going to give you tonight, amen, the key to overcome, amen, that one killer of faith, wait, by this word, wait. I need that. I'm going to say it again. One of the worst Killers of faith is the word wait. Nothing happens. Nothing is going on. Everybody's looking around. Well, when's it going to come to pass? The man's preached about it. He's testified about it. The evangelist has preached about it. And we have not seen anything yet. So what is, what's going on? And we let our faith grow weak. We let our faith grow weary. But the way that you are going to overcome that killer of faith is also wait. Yes. The wait that is involved in waiting for the promise is a space of time when nothing is happening. We have it in our mind. Well, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to twiddle my thumbs. I'm going to tap my feet. I'm going to raise my hands and I'm going to say amen. I know everything that I'm doing, but I cannot progress. I cannot move any further than where I am at because I'm waiting for the promise. But the Bible tells us they that wait they that wait upon the Lord. What is the Lord going to do for you? The Lord is going to renew your strength. As God begins to renew your strength, it's going to renew and increase your faith. Amen. It is going to refresh you. It's going to reestablish you. It's going to allow the anointing of God to begin to flow across your heart and your mind. Not only is our strength going to be renewed, but we are going to mount up with wings as eagles. We are going to run and not be weary and we are going to walk and not faint. Why? Because we are waiting on God. The Bible says in Psalms 27 and verse number 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall, he shall what? He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. But Brother Yusupan, how can I wait upon the Lord if waiting is a killer of faith? I'm going to give you the key and I'm going to tell you the difference here in a moment. But when we wait on God, God is going to do something. When we are of good courage, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to fall by the wayside. I'm not going to throw in the towel because I know what God has promised me. I know what God has given to me. I know what God has spoken spoken to me so days may have passed weeks may have passed months may have passed years may have passed but I'm here to tell you my God shall strengthen your heart this I say wait 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 on the Lord I'm sure you sing this song this chorus they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. So what is the key to killing the, the, the faith killer waiting? And you say that the way we are going to overcome it is by waiting on the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. Sister, if you can throw that back up there. They that wait upon Amen. the Lord. When you read that scripture, when you, is it, is it okay if I step off yes. the platform? Okay. Well, when you read that scripture, what do you think? I'm going to tell you what most people think, but what do you think when you say, wait on the Lord? What does it involve? To a lot of us, 
It's doing what we're doing right now. Just sitting and looking and saying, I wonder what that pre crazy preacher is going to do next. Yes. Amen. So Amen. here we are. We're sitting. We're waiting. We're twiddling our thumbs. We're raising our hands. We're asking God, amen, to move. But you need to understand when it talks about waiting on the Lord, it's not sitting there twiddling our thumbs. It's not sitting there wasting time. It's not sitting there waiting for the next bolt. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It's not sitting there waiting for the next bolt of lightning or the fire from heaven to fall. But there is something that's got to burn within our spirit. There's got to be something that's going to burn within our soul that's going to cause us to get up. It's going to cause us to move. It's going to cause us to go forward. Amen. And as we trust God, as we believe God, as we wait upon God, we are going to see our heart. We are going to see our strength and we are going to see our faith renewed in God. So Isaiah 40, 31 is not telling us to sit on a pew until God sends a bolt of lightning or God sends fire from heaven. But God is trying to tell us to wait on the Lord. You say, well, Brother Yusupan, you said that, but what does it mean? Let me give you a clue. Let's go to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, and verse number 49. Jesus said, how is it then that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? Here's the key. Here's the key. I'm not going to sit there. I'm just not going to allow grass to grow under my feet. Amen. But there's something that I've got to do. I've got to be about my father's business. Here's the key. When you, how many of you like to go out to eat? I think that's an American pastime nowadays. Now, I don't, I don't know about y'all. My wife, she likes going to these buffets. But you know, brother, if I'm going to pay 12 to $15 a plate, I don't want to have to serve myself. You know, that's like going through Walmart, going through the self-checkout line because they closed everything else and they expect you to do their work while they're making 15 bucks an hour just standing there. Now, nothing against self-checkout lines. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Amen. But don't tell me. I've got to do it because you get paid to push the buttons on the cash register. Yes. And so, I don't, I don't want to go to a buffet. But if I go, to, if I go someplace... Amen. Well, I don't know if y'all have Western Sizzling around here. Amen. They're one of the few steakhouses that still, they have buffet, but you still can order off a menu. Amen. So I'll just use that as an example. I order my steak. I order my tater. I get my butter and sour cream. Amen. But I want them not only to bring it to me, but if I need something, I don't want to have to go back up and get some more. Amen. I want them to service me. And so what is that person doing? They are waiting on me. They are waiting on me. Some, sometimes I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Well, where's that waitor or waitress at? They're off playing, Amen. doing whatever somewhere. Amen. Behind the wall there. And so this same concept we need to put within our spirit that if we are going to be about our father's business, amen, I've got, oh, hallelujah, I've got to get up and I've got to begin to do something for Jesus. Amen, amen, I'm going to wait on the Lord. What are you saying, Brother Yusufan? I'm saying this. It's time we minister to God. It's time we really love him. It's time we give him our all, even when nothing's happening, even when the battle's, amen, fiery hot, even when we're in the midst of the trial, we're going to get up and we are going to wait on God. Lord, what do you want now? Lord, what can I bring you now? I'll tell you what you can bring him. I'll tell you what you can do for him. You can bring him your love. Amen. You can bring him your worship. You can bring him your praise. Amen. You can bring him your heart. You can go out and tell someone about Jesus. Amen. Tell someone about Jesus. That's waiting on God. Because what? 
as the Lord said, I'm going about and I'm doing my father's business. What was his father's business? He was going out. He was teaching the word. He was sharing the word. Yes, he was doing signs and wonders and miracles, but that was to draw the people so he could teach them and he could minister to them. Oh, somehow, God, get a hold of us as the apostolic church that not only do we have signs and wonders and miracles, but more importantly, that we can use these things. We can use the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost that we can begin to share the word. We can begin to tell someone, hey, there's a God that loves you. There is a God that cares for you. There is a God that will heal your body. There is a God that I'm going to choose to believe the report of the Lord because the Lord said, I am healed. The Lord said, I am delivered. The Lord said, I am set free. So wait. Wait on the Lord. I'm not going to sit, but I'm going to observe him. I'm going to minister to him. I'm going to bring forth to him, if you will, with the analogy of a waiter or a waitress bringing me a cup of, amen, iced tea, amen, that I'm going to be able to drink. So waiting on God is not sitting there, but it's doing what we can do for the kingdom of God. No matter how small, no matter how great, no matter how much, It messes with our philosophy. It messes with our thinking in the way that we think it ought to be. You don't need to get frustrated. Amen. With what God has given to you. The Bible says in the gospel of St. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now it came to pass that as they went, they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into their house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But the Bible says Martha was cumbered about which much serving. What was she doing? She was waiting. She was serving as a waitress. Well, everything fine and good. Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? She was serving the earthly. She was serving the fleshly. She was serving the natural. Yes. And then because Martha was cumbered about, busy, amen, weighed down and pressed with much serving, she came to the Lord and said, Jesus, don't you care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Tell her to come, help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you're worried about too many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What was Martha doing? Waiting on God. God. What was Mary doing? She was waiting on God. Not with the earthly. Not with the bread. Not with the water. Not with the drink. Not with the flesh. Amen. But she was waiting on God with that worship. She was waiting on that God shedding tears upon the feet of Jesus. Amen. And wiping the feet of Jesus with the hairs of her head. That's what she was doing. So you tell me in the mind of Jesus which one was more important. Bringing the cup of tea. Bringing the biscuits. Bringing the gravy. Amen. Bringing the fat back. Or is waiting on God. Loving him. Serving him, praising God, worshiping God, magnifying God. Amen. We've got to turn around. We've got to get back to the forefront. I've come to praise him. I've come to worship him. I've come to magnify him. I've come to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with a lot of churches. And I'm not saying this about your church because I don't know your church. Amen. But too many churches, especially apostolic churches, think that that, if they're going to draw the crowds, they got to have the programs. They they got to have, amen, all these things that appease. Amen to the flesh. They got to have the the smoke machines. They got to have the colored flashing lights. Amen. They they've got to have the latest and greatest and have this program for this and this program for that. Yes. Now, let me say, I'm not against program. Right. 
Okay? I'm not against program, but that's not the answer. That's the an that's not the answer. You want to know what the answer is? I'll tell you in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, in verse number 1, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and a filled hole them with the Holy Ghost and they begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. You want to have revival? You want to have church growth? You want to see great things happen? We don't need a program. We need to wait on God with our worship. We need to wait on God with our servitude. We need to get off our lazy rear ends and begin to do a work for God. I'm going to invite someone. I'm going to tell someone on. I'm going to bring someone to the house of God. That's what's going to cause revival. That's what's going to cause, amen, the church to fill up. That's what's going to cause, amen, the blessing of the Lord to flow when there is someone, when there is someone, when there is someone that is willing to wait upon God. Too many times when we're sitting there, not doing anything, as I mentioned, that weight becomes a faith killer because we're really not waiting on God. We say we are. Why do we say we are? To make ourselves feel better. Well, bless God, bro. I'm waiting on God. Look on me. I'm waiting on God. Hallelujah. Woo! Can't you feel it right now? Uh -huh, what I feel is not what you feel, that's for sure. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I give all. I give all. I give all. I give all myself to thee. So if you want to kill your faith, you go ahead and sit there. If you want to kill your faith, do absolutely nothing and look mighty pretty. Amen. But if you want to wait on God, where your heart is going to be strengthened, where your faith is going to be strengthened, amen, then don't get anxious and don't worry about trying to figure everything out yourself. Put it in the hands of God. Amen. Put it in the hands of God. I was listening to a sermon last week. Somebody sent me. It was Brother Jack Cunningham who pastors in Maryland. And he made a statement when he said what he's about to say. My ears perked up. He said, I'm going to tell you one of the hardest scriptures in all the Bible for a child of God to fill and to obey. So that caught my attention. Because I want to know where I'm falling short. Because I want to make sure I'm serving God. I want to make sure I'm loving God. Amen. And then he read from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. Let me turn it there to you if, if you don't know what it says. And sister, I told you I'd probably pull something out of the hat. Amen. 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 But Proverbs chapter 3. Amen. And verse number five. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Those three verses, they are the hardest verses. And I thought about it, and I had to agree with Brother Cunningham. These three verses are the hardest verses for anyone to fulfill, for anyone to obey. Why? Because he said, trust in the Lord. Well, I trust in the Lord. But we tr do we trust in the Lord with all our heart? Amen. How, how many of us have a backup plan? Well, plan A didn't work, so we'll go to plan B. Yeah, just in case. Just in case. Uh -huh. And plan B doesn't work, so we'll, we'll go to plan C. Plan C doesn't work. Maybe we've got a plan D. And if we don't, we're sunk. Uh -huh. But when we are trusting in the Lord with all our heart, there's not going to be a plan A. 
There's not going to be a plan B. There's not going to be a plan C. And there's not going to be a plan D. But what if God doesn't come through? Did not God say, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory? Did not my God say, I will be with you in all things? Did my God not say, amen, I will never leave you nor forsake you? Amen, but I will be with you until the end of the world. We can't have it both ways, folks. We can't have it both ways. If we are going to trust in the Lord, we've got to throw our plans out the window and we've got to see and we've got to be willing to say, all right, God, here I am. Here it is, Lord. Here it is, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. But then you say, well, you know what, Brother Yusuf, Pan, I tried that and nothing happened, so I had to go back to plan A. You aren't trusting the Lord with all your heart. Uh-huh. I've done the same thing. So I wasn't trusting the Lord with all my heart. Amen. But we've got to come to the place that we trust in the Lord with all our heart. How how do we know? How do we know that we are trusting the Lord in all our heart? Because the next few words of that verse says, and lean not, and lean not to your own understanding. That's how you know I'm not leaning on my strength. I'm not leaning upon my ability. I'm not leaning upon my knowledge. I'm not leaning upon my education. I'm not leaning upon my job. I'm not leaning upon my family. I'm not leaning upon my money. The only thing I've got to lean on is my Jesus. And as I lean on Jesus in all my ways, I am going to acknowledge him. I am going to lift him up. And I am going to give him praise I am going to give him glory and I am not going to be wise in my own eyes and God and God is going to direct my path amen Amen. when we try to work things out we bring a lot of pain and suffering a lot of pain and suffering upon our life that we don't have to go through we have to learn to wait upon the Lord you must trust God before you will able be able to ever wait upon God. Psalms 20 verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defendeth thee. Listen, the Lord hears us. That's a promise. Yes, it is. It's a promise. He will hear you in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept the burnt sacrifice, Selah. That word Selah means to wait upon it, think upon it, meditate upon it, reread it, re-speak it, dwell upon it. Grant thee according to thine own heart and full all, fulfill all thy counsel. In other words, Lord, I'm just surrendering all to you that you can do what you oh. want to do. And we will rejoice in thy salvation. We will rejoice and in the name of our God. And we will set up our banners, the Lord, fulfill all thy petitions. What does it mean by rejoicing in the salvation of God? I'm waiting upon him. I'm waiting upon him. I'm waiting upon him. I'm waiting upon him. Yes. You say, Brother Yusuf Pan, I want scripture to back up what you're saying. I cannot give you chapter and verse right at this moment. I didn't think to write it down. But there is a scripture in the book of Acts. And you got Bible commentary. If you got it on your phone, you can look it. The Bible says that the apostles, they ministered unto the Lord. They ministered. They were about to make a big decision. Amen. They ministered unto the Lord. How did they minister unto the Lord? They ministered unto him with worship. They ministered unto him with fasting. They ministered unto him. Amen. Remembering. Amen. The words of old. Amen. The words of the prophets. The words of the psalmist. The words of the wise man. Amen. They ministered unto God. And as they ministered unto God, God touched them. God helped them. And God gave them direction. So when we get to the place that waiting begins to kill my faith, let's turn it around. Let's flip it around. And now, instead of sitting there destroying my faith instead of sitting there bringing myself down I'm going to stand up and I'm going to raise my hands to heaven and I'm going to raise my eyes to heaven and I'm going to raise my voice to heaven and I am going to worship and I am going to minister and I am going to glorify the name of the Lord because the Bible says now I know verse number 6 that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. 
Yes. I've got the promise that God's going to hear me and God's going to save me. Some, verse 7, trust in chariots and some in horses. But the psalmist said, we are not going to trust in chariots. We're going to remember the name of the Lord. Why? Because verse number 8 says it all so well. They are brought down and fallen. Who? Those that trust in horses and chariots. But we are risen. We are risen and stand upright. Because I am waiting on God. I am waiting on God. Is there someone here? You're going to let the word of God click within your spirit. Is there someone here tonight that will begin to understand? I don't have to let the word wait to be a faith killer. It may not happen today. But who says it's not going to happen? happen tomorrow or the next day I'm going to work and I'm going to give myself to the kingdom of God like everything's happening even when nothing's happening and as I wait on God God's going to strengthen God's going to bless and God is going to flow within our midst teach me Lord teach me Lord Romans 8 24 25 for we are saved by hope we are saved by hope. Hope that is seen is not hope. Yes. Man, I've got hope, but I can't see it, so I lose my hope. That's not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we with patience wait for it. Wait for it. Why? Because we have the assurance. That word hope means assurance. Yes. That word hope means confidence. I have the assurance. I have the confidence that God's going to do what he said to do. So that's why the writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 through 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Don't throw it away. Which hath a great recompense of reward. For we have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. We need to understand that everything is not in our timing. Everything doesn't happen when we want it to happen. God does things in his own time. He does things in his own order. Amen. And as we understand that and we believe that, then I am going to take trust in God's timing. Let me ask you tonight, is there anything too hard for God? No. Then why do we fret? Why do we worry when it does not come to pass as of right now? How many times, how many times do we reach the pinnacle and we let go just as we are about to climb onto the summit and we fall all the way back down? I'm afraid there's many times we've all done that. I've done that. Well, I'm tired of, I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of moving forward. But you know, when I keep the Lord upon me and I rejoice in the Lord, does not Habakkuk say he will strengthen our hind legs? Right. I preached a sermon several years ago and I showed a, a picture of, of these goats on the side of a mountain. And I think one picture was also of a goat climbing the side of a dam. And in studying out these goats, they instinctively knew how to put their feet even in the little bit of a hole that they could climb up. And they had the strength and they had the agility to climb straight up the dam's wall. Amen. And so God will strengthen us. When it, th when it even seems like we can't do it. I'm going to tell you something. God will not let you miss anything. Be patient and wait upon God. David, David was a teenager when David was anointed by Samuel to be king instead of Saul. Yes. Some Bible commentators say he was around 15 years old. So that's a good round number. That's the number we'll use. Okay. Will that work? That'll work? All right, thank you. Amen. And then I wanted to know how long was it between the time that David was anointed of Samuel to be king over Israel and by the time he put himself upon the throne or the throne was brought to him. Any, anybody want to take a guess about how long of a space of time it was? No, sir. Longer? Longer. Ten? Longer. Fifteen. Fifteen. About fifteen years. 
about 15 years, David waited. And what's interesting to note, you've heard this man preach on it, I'm sure, there were at least two occasions that David could have rightfully killed King Saul. Yes, there was. He could have rightfully killed King Saul. And that's what happened in the world of politics back then. You didn't like the king, you killed him, and you took over the throne. So David in his carnal mind and his carnal thinking could have said, well, I've been anointed king by the man of God, so I'm going to rise to the occasion. I'm going to get rid of Saul. But when David was faced with that fact and his men said, go ahead, David, the Lord has put thine enemy in thy hands. Go ahead and kill him. Take your rightful place. David said, whoa, wait a minute. Not me. 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 I'm not going to touch God's anointing. I'm not going to mess with God's anointing. We're going to let God handle this situation. And I believe that this is one of the reasons, not the only one, but I believe that this is one of the reasons David was known after a man after God's own heart. Because he was willing to wait upon God. Now we do read in the scripture that he took some things upon himself that he shouldn't have had to, that he shouldn't have done. And he paid the price. He paid the price. But ultimately... David knew that if I am going to be blessed of God, I've got to wait upon God. And he just wasn't sitting there doing nothing. He was running for his life. He was hiding in the caves. He was hiding in the wilderness because Saul was out to kill him. And I remember one time at the latter end of 1 Samuel chapter 23, I believe it is, that when they went out and they came back home that the enemy had come in and, and, and took all the, the women and the children and all the livestock and carried them away. And David's 450 men were ready to stone him. Because they weren't there to protect their land. They weren't there to protect their goods. And David did not run. But the scripture says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. Have you ever wondered how he strengthened himself in the Lord? I'm going to tell you. He sang praises unto God. He made songs unto God. He knew the scripture. He read the scripture. He quoted the scripture. That is what we've got to do. We've got to come to that place. Amen. We need to understand that you can allow waiting to kill your faith. Or you can allow waiting to build your faith. It depends on what waiting you are going to do. Brother, if you can come. Amen. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and do nothing? Well, praise God, nothing's happened. So I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm not going to move for the kingdom. I'm not going to operate in the kingdom. Amen. I'm just going to let someone else come in and do it. You're missing out. Amen. It's going to kill your faith. It's going to destroy your faith. It's going to annihilate you. It's going to hurt you. It's, it's going to bring hindrance upon you. Amen. But then on the other side, here you go. Amen. I think I can probably finish up here without that. Thank you. Amen. That we need to understand that I am going to wait and I am going to trust in God. I'm going to make the difference. Everybody say, I'm going to make the difference. I'm going to make the difference. You can make the difference. Yes. You know, sometimes we, we, get, we get the thought, we get the feeling you know, we've got to have that special evangelist come in. Uh, we don't need the special evangelist. It's nice to have them when we can, but we don't need them. There's a, t- there's, there's a time for it. You know, I'm not saying there's not a time because God has given us the five-fold ministry. Apostles or prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what? The perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Amen. So, yes, there is a time, but they're not always going to be there. There is just going to be times that it's us homeboys. It's just us. Nobody else. Just the family. Well, here we are. Let's hurry up and clap our hands a little bit and, and sing our couple songs. And then we'll go home and say we went to church or Brother McCartney doesn't call us and, and say, where were you at tonight? How come you weren't in church tonight? Amen. Amen. Now, I, I don't call anybody, but I text them. I text him. You know, brother, I used to hate texting. And for a long time, I wouldn't text. I thought, pick up the phone and call me. Yes. You know, pick up the phone and speak to me. But I have a good friend, and he was presbyter of the section that I was in in Texas. And he was a texter. 
And if I had to reach Brother Ibada, I had to text him. He texted me. And if I was going to reach him, and it wasn't he wouldn't answer his phone, but he just liked texting better. And so since I started texting, I like it a whole lot better. <laughs> Amen. Because I don't, you, you know, you can send a text, how come you weren't in church tonight? You know, you don't have to listen to someone bless you out. Well, none of your business, preacher. And I've had people tell me that. Well, if you're in the church, it is my business because I'm your pastor. I'm concerned about your soul. So here we are tonight. The greatest, let's stand. I need to quit. I'm starting to ramble now. The greatest killer of faith is waiting. But the greatest strengthening of our faith is waiting. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. Amen. So when you hear that voice in the back of your mind telling you, you really want to do it this way, or do that, do it this way, or do it that way. You need to say to yourself, is this what God wants me to do? Or does God have something better for me? We've got to stick with the inspiration of God that God puts within our spirit. And while we are waiting for the promise to come to pass, it will. It will come to pass unless we lengthen it. You can lengthen you receiving the promise by your actions. You can lengthen it. But if I want to keep it short, sweet, and simple, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to minister unto God. I am going to worship God, and I am going to praise God, and I am going to give God my everything. And everybody say amen. amen. Let's stand. Oh, we're standing. Let's lift our hands, and let's love the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. If you want to get to heaven, you have to wait.